you're watching Cooking with Diane. I'm Diane, and today we're going to talk about how to shuck and cut corn efficiently. Corn is one of the best vegetables, or I guess it's technically a grain of summer. I love to eat it all summer long, but I do find that a lot of people make preparing it a lot more work for themselves than they need to. So I'm going to show you some tricks on how to make the task of shucking and cutting corn a lot easier. So we're going to start by shucking corn. That just means taking off the green husks. The best and most efficient way I've found to shuck corn is to actually grab it by all of the silks at the top. If you split them in half, you'll be able to see the corn right away. And you can then pull down and cut and take all of the husk off at once. So usually I just split it at the top, pull down one side, and then pull down the other side. This will leave you with totally shucked corn and usually just a few little silky hair fibers to take off as well. Then you can decide if you wanna leave on the stem or not. If you're going to be serving your corn on the cob, leave the stem on. It makes a really nice handle for people to eat their corn with. If you're going to be cutting your corn, you might want to snap it off so that it's not in your way. So one thing I see a lot of people doing when they go to cut kernels off of a cob of corn is that they want to stand up the corn vertically. And I guess that makes sense. And then you can just cut down on the corn. But this does create the problem of having corn kernels that go everywhere all over your kitchen. What I do is I lay the corn down and then the kernels don't go everywhere and it's just as easy to cut. So I'll lay the corn on its side and I'll cut on the side that's away from me and just run my knife along the side of the corn to cut off the kernels. So you can see all I'm doing is balancing my knife next to the corn and then dragging it alongside the corn to cut off the kernels. And you can play around with how close your knife is to the cob. If your knife is too close to the cob, it might feel like it's difficult to cut. It might feel like it's getting a little bit stuck. And if it's too far, then you're just not gonna get full kernels. So you do wanna make sure that you're putting your knife just the right amount of distance from the center of the cob. So here's all the corn I got from three ears of corn. Each ear of corn generally gives me about half a cup of corn kernels, depending on the size. Once you've taken all of the kernels off of an ear of corn, there's still more on the cob that you can get. So what I like to do is actually turn my knife around. So instead of using the sharp edge, I'll use the back edge and I'll drag it along the cob of corn. And that'll force out any little bits of corn that are still stuck in there that maybe I wasn't able to get when I was cutting the kernels off. Careful, it's slippery. So you're gonna get some kind of like corn mash, corn paste from the inside of the cob if you make sure to scrape it when you're done. You might also see some white liquid coming out of the corn. That's actually natural cornstarch that will thicken whatever you're cooking. So I highly recommend scraping your cobs once you're done cutting off the kernels to try to get this last little bit of cornstarch and little bits of corn. Now your cobs are still good to put in vegetable stock or to simmer along with your corn chowder if you want, uh, or you can just compost them. Once your corn is cut off the cob, you can actually put it in a Ziploc bag, spread it out and freeze it right away if you wanna use it later, or you can go ahead and cook it now. 
I love to saute cut corn with butter and shallots and smoked paprika and maybe some fresh basil. If it's really sweet, I'll even put it raw into salads. Or of course, I'll make corn chowder. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.